Amen. He is stronger. Thank you, praise team. That fires us up. Well, this morning I continue in our message series, Facebook Questions, Good Book Answers. And as I mentioned last week, this series really began with me trying to get a little creative on Facebook and trying to get some interactions going by posting a simple question. And that was, what question would you like a sermon to answer? And I was quite amazed that after about a couple days, I received almost 100 responses from uh, members of this church, from friends have across the country, from people who aren't even Christians, uh, atheists, some even, you know, kind of wrote in and responded. It was quite fascinating to me. And of course, I said, boy, as a preacher, this will preach. I could use this. So I decided out of this that I would uh, put together a series to try to answer some of these questions. Now, what was most fascinating to me, and I mentioned this last week, was that one of the most popular themes or issues that came out of these questions was the issue of prayer. It seemed like so many people are curious about prayer and find prayer challenging and uh, ask questions like, uh, what about unanswered prayer? Or how does prayer work? Or do I need to save up all my prayers for just the important ones? And on and on and on and on. And so. I decided really to devote two particular sermons to prayer because there was so much material and so many questions. And last week I began uh, with the question, how does prayer work? Because I think uh, in many ways that's a central question when it comes to a lot of our questions about prayer. And my message last week simply was this, that, that prayer does not change God, it changes us. That prayer is not some you know, rhetorical technique to persuade God or some religious magic. Prayer is intimate conversation with God that transforms us. Prayer doesn't bend God's will to our will, it bends our will to God's will. And so I hope you understood that last week and have come to know the power of true prayer. Now, today what I wanna do in part two of this series is to try to help you understand really how to get the most out of your prayer life. To, to know the secret to powerful praying, to get to understand prayer in such a way and to do it in such a way that it gives you strength and power and courage for a living because I don't know about you, but given the, the light of what's going on today, I need power and strength for a living. Don't you? Amen? So I'm gonna share with you today how to get the most out of your prayer life uh, and really understand that. Now, of course, one of the most popular questions uh, during Hurricane Irma and after Irma was this. Do you have power? Do you have power? Do you have power? How many of you asked that? <laughs> I, think, I think I heard that question about a million times. Do you have power? Do you have power? Can we stay with you? Do you have power? Do you have power? Do you have power? And uh, some of you here, you, you, didn't, you never lost power, right? Some of you lucky ones. And, uh, but many of us were without power for a very long time. I know we live in, over in Treasure Island, Isla Capri, and our island was the last to get power, out of power for about a week. But we were okay because we were staying at the LEC here at the church because we were an emergency operations center for the police, for the fire departments, for, uh, for council people. I mean, it was amazing. And guess what? They brought this big generator in. It was huge, huge, right? And they connected it to the church, and that thing ran and ran, and we were with power the whole time. It was great. And they kept it there until our church finally got power. Well, folks, this morning, what I want to share with you through my bones, all of my bones and my heart, is that we have a power generator a spiritual power generator available to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter what happens in life. And that power is God, and we access it through prayer. You see, folks, we are not mechanically powered as human beings. We're not hydraulically powered. We're not electrically powered. You know what we are? We are God-powered, folks. Because in Genesis, it says that when God created us, he breathed his breath into us, his life breath into us. See, God gives power to those who love him. Take a look at what it says in 2 Peter. I love this. His divine power, God's divine power has given us everything needed for what? For life. 
And even in Acts, we see this power promised and provided to the early church when Jesus said this in Acts, but you will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. And so it came to pass on the day of Pentecost, there was the early church and the Holy Spirit came upon them like wildfire and blew through and the church was born and did amazing things. And folks, what I wanna tell you this morning is that same power, that same power that was available to the early church is available to us. And it will strengthen us, it will convict us, it will guide us, it will encourage us, it will give us the courage we need. It says this in Ephesians, take a look. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. And perhaps you want this power, but you really don't know how to get it. Maybe you're, you're new to the faith or new to the church and you never really understood that you could have this power for living. Maybe you've always thought that, you know, religion is just a set of rules or beliefs that you intellectually just assent to. And now you're realizing, really, I can have power? Yeah. Or maybe you've been in the church most of your life and been a Christian most of your life, but honestly, you haven't really experienced much power and you really don't know how to get that power and that strength that the Bible always talks about and you always read about and you always hope for, but you've never been able to get. Well, folks, I'm gonna share with you today how you can live in the strength of the power of the Lord because here's the thing I've learned. People you know and people that I know that do great things for God, they're not better than us. They're not more skilled than us. They have simply learned the secret of being plugged into God's power and his love. And through all that, they've learned how to live with power. And this morning, I'm gonna share with you how to do it, how that works. And first, I need to tell you this that if you really want to experience the power of God in your life through prayer, here's what you gotta do. You gotta expect the power. Say that with me, expect the power. That's simple, but it needs to happen. I mean, I love that old story of the crowd that went to the hilltop to pray for rain, you know, and they have, it hadn't rained in weeks and the land had dried up, the cattle had died, it was an awful situation. And so they went up to this hilltop to pray and there was a lady who went with this crowd and she had on a rain hat, rain boots, a raincoat and a big umbrella. And they were looking at her like she was silly, she was crazy. And one man finally had the audacity to say, what are you doing? What are you wearing all this stuff? Don't you know it hasn't rained in weeks? And she said, well, what are you coming up for here anyway? When I pray for God, I expect a downpour, baby. I love that, because that's the truth. The key to manifesting the power of God in your life through prayer is to expect something to happen. And let me tell you, many people feel powerless in their life because they have low expectations. I mean, you, you see them, you know, through attitudes, how you doing today? Well, I guess I'm doing all right. Whatever. I mean, when you came into worship today, when you got up and drove to the church today, were you expecting something to happen in here? I hope you were. I hope you were expecting to experience the power of God in this place and to be transformed by it. You see, God will not force his power on us. We have to give God permission to work. And we do that through expectant prayer. And honestly, folks, I've come to the place in my life in ministry, when I want something, I simply boldly ask God for it. Now, if God doesn't wanna give it to me, he won't, that's fine. He'll work it out, but I still pray boldly. God likes bold prayers. The Bible is filled with bold prayers. I get tired of wimpy prayers. Oh Lord, if you would just be here for just a little bit. Oh Lord, if we just might uh, ask you, are you kidding me? Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. The Bible says in James that you have not because you asketh not. If you take delight in the Lord, the Psalm says, God will give you the desires of your heart. And we read passages like that, and we study them, and we like them, and we say we believe them, and then we pray for our hangnail or the callus on our foot. 
We need to come to the place where we realize that we have a great big God who answers prayer. And the Bible is filled with big, bold prayers, and we need to pray that way. I mean, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is the, is the story in the Gospels of the Roman centurion, a pagan man. The religious establishment couldn't stand him, yet Jesus saved his best compliment ever for this pagan soldier. That's right. And I'll tell you why. He approached Jesus and never met him before, but heard about him. And this Roman centurion had a, had a servant friend who was sick. So he approached Jesus and said, Jesus, I need you to heal this man. Jesus said, well, I'll, co I'll come over to your house and heal him. He says, no, you don't need to come over to my house. Jesus is like, well, how can I heal the man if I can't come over to your house where he is? And the Roman centurion said, well, just say the word right now and he'll be healed. And Jesus couldn't believe it, the faith of this man. Because his thought process was this. Well, I'm in the army, and when I give an order, it's done. And certainly Jesus, when I tell him to do something, he'll do it. And Jesus said to the man, you have the greatest faith I've ever seen in all of Israel. The best. And he said, it has been done as you have believed. What if you lived your prayer life in that way, expecting something to happen? What if you woke up every day and said, Lord, I expect your power today. When I go into work, I expect your power. And I, I know you're gonna, gonna fill me today. What if you went to work or school expecting the power, knowing God's gonna work through you and help you? What if you face every day expecting that power in your life? Oh, watch out. So you gotta expect the power. Here's another thing you have to do though. You gotta, what? Plug in to the power, right? Quite often people will come to my office, you know, all burned out, all frustrated by life, and some of them are chronic. And quite often I will ask them this question. When was the last time you spent 10 minutes alone with God in prayer? Now, how many of you did your homework from last week? Don't lie, you're in church. I guarantee you, those who really did it for the last seven days, 10 minutes every morning in prayer, you feel a difference today? But I ask him that. When was the last time you spent 10 minutes with God in prayer? And most of the time they say, um, I don't know. Folks, we can't receive the power unless we're plugged into the power source. All this equipment is great, but it means nothing unless it's plugged in. So I'm going to share with you right now, folks, how to plug into that power and how to get your prayers answered. That sound good? This is for free, too. How to plug into that power and how to get your prayers answered, okay? Well, there is offering and all that, but anyway. Let's take a look. We find it in the Gospel of Mark 11, chapter 11, verse 24. Jesus says this. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it. And what? It will be yours. Now, we see three things we must do for powerful prayer and to get our prayers answered. The first thing through this text is we have to be specific. You may want to write this down. Be specific. Prayers need a target. They need a target. Now, don't feel selfish about praying for something. Don't. I mean, look at it this way. Oftentimes, we don't really know what we want until we begin to pray for. Now, if God doesn't want to give it to us, he won't. He'll give us something better. But don't let that stop you from praying. Be specific. Here's the next thing. Pray with faith. Jesus says, believe you have received it. And that goes back to expectations. What do you expect? Expect God is going to answer you. Now, he may not give you the answer you want, but expect God to answer you. See, the verb tenses here are in the past tense. Believed you have received it. Sometimes God is, is waiting to give us something, but he's waiting for us to be ready and to ask for it. The old statement says, when the student is ready, what? The master will appear. But there's a third thing we must do. And some of you need to hear this this morning. It comes from uh, the next verse in this chapter of, about prayer. Jesus says this. Whenever you stand praying, what? Forgive if you have anything against anyone. 
Now listen closely. One of the biggest blocks to answered prayer is resentment. God cannot move in our lives if we're holding on to resentment. And maybe for some of you in worship today, you don't feel God's movement, you don't feel connected because there's this big block of resentment in your heart. And if you want it to go away, here's what you do. Every single day, you pray for that person or situation. Every single day, you pray for that person or situation, and I guarantee you, God can move that mountain. In fact, Jesus says it. Faithful prayer moves mountains. Now, did you know that, that the Bible inspired dynamite? Literally, dynamite. Many don't know this. You know, back in the day, Alfred Nobel invented dynamite. And he was a Christian. And you know he got his inspiration from the Gospel of Mark 11, uh, verse 23, when Jesus says, powerful praying can move mountains. And the word move there, in that verse, is dunamis, or dynamite. And that was the purpose of dynamite, right? To move mountains so roads could be built through. Folks, we have spiritual dynamite available to us if we will just plug into it. Here's another thing we got to do. We have to rely on the power. And for some of you, this is the most difficult thing to do. Because here's the truth I've learned, folks. God has given us all the energy and power we need. And many of our problems come from the fact that we simply don't rely on that power. I mean, you know that great verse in Isaiah that many of us quote all the time? Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. <coughs> they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. That means relying on the power. And folks, in order for us to get that power, we have to be in pace and in rhythm with God. And many of our problems is this, the fact that our rhythm and our pace doesn't match God's rhythm and God's pace because God has a rhythm for us. But so often we get out of rhythm because we're not in prayer. But we go to God in prayer and, and, and trust him. Give our best and then give God the rest and let go. Amazing things can happen, but it's amazing how hard it is for some of us to learn this. I mean, golf taught me this. I don't do much golfing nowadays. <laughs> I have other priorities in my life. But as some of you know, I used to golf a lot. But when I first began to play golf, you know, I was, I was a hack, you know? I thought that, okay, here's this ball, and so I have to take brute force and just bang it with all my might. And I would go to the driving range, and I would go out and play 18 holes, and I'd boom, 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 boom. You know, I was like Spalding in Caddyshack. Some of you know that. And I got an injury one day. I was trying to hit the ball so hard, Bam! This tendon snap. Mm, I know. I can see you crying. Mm. It was terrible. And finally, one day, I was hacking and doing this, and there was this old man on the driving reins, and he said, "Hey there, young fella." <laughs> hey there, young fella. I said, he goes, "You're not too good at this, are you?" I said, "Thanks, Sherlock. You know." But then, but then he said to me, that wasn't very Christ-like, was it? Then he said to me, and some of you who are golfers know this, he said, son, you got to let the club do the work. What a concept. He held up the club and said, you see, son, this club was designed to hit that golf ball. Now, some of you in here may debate that. <laughs> okay. But he said, you have to swing in such an easy way that you let Gravity, take over and do the work. And he said, you ought to do this. Next time you play golf, just swing at 50%. I said, okay, what do I have to lose? So I went out and just swung the club at 50% and let the club do the work. Oh, my gosh. Exhilaration. 
I hit the ball, it hit the green. I played so well. And that whole experience reminds me of our struggle in our prayer life. So often we don't let prayer do its work. We want to control everything. We pray with brute force and we're trying so hard, right? And we pray for action and then we tell God how to take that action. We pray for results and then tell God how the results should be. And just instead of letting prayer happen, letting God work. You know, some of you are holding on to unnecessary stress and pain and frustration because you simply have not allowed yourself to trust God in prayer. All right. Here's another thing we got to do. Use the power. Now, there was a study done on burnout a few years ago, which I thought was very fascinating. They, they studied clergy, businessmen, executives, plumbers who just burned out, just quit. And you know what they discovered in this study? Fascinating stuff. That overwork is not what causes burnout. But they said instead, overfunctioning causes burnout. And what is overfunctioning? Overfunctioning is worrying about things you cannot control. That's what causes burnout. In fact, in the study, they learned that actually work gives you more energy. Purposeful work gives you more energy. And we have to learn that when it comes to prayer. In fact, that means our soul is kind of like the batteries in our cell phones. Now, I learned a, a, a neat trick that you're going to get for free today to help you get more power in your phone. Because I know you complain a lot about, well, I'm always running out of power. I never have enough power. And I plug it in and I charge it, but I never have enough power. Why does it lose power so much? Well, did you know? I didn't know, I just found out. Did you know that in order to get the most out of your cell phone battery and its power, you have to let the power run out and let this thing work almost to the very end and then charge it? You see, so often what we do, right, at the end of the day, the thing is at 50 or 60%, we plug it in, and guess what? At the, it's 100% the next morning, but guess what? It is a false charge because we have not allowed the battery to work itself out. In order to get the most of the battery, we have to give an active charge. Let it run out, and folks, that'll preach, baby! In order for us to get the most fully charged, we have to actually use the power God gives us. And so often we come to church and we pray and we worship. This is great and we feel so good on Sunday afternoon and Monday and then by Wednesday. Ugh. Why? Because we're not using the power God gives us in ministry and in love and in life. That's why. To get the most out of the spiritual charge you get on Sunday mornings, you have to go out and use that power in your life and ministry. So let me help you, give you a little handle on this sermon. When it comes to praying without ceasing and praying powerfully, come across these, these neat tips. Try an alarm clock, hallelujah, all right? That means when your cell phone alarm goes off in the morning or your alarm clock goes off, that you say, hallelujah! Make your spouse think you're crazy and commit to the Lord and say, Lord, today I'm going to live gratefully and be grateful for everything I have. And then when you get into the shower, practice shower power. <laughs> that means when you're bathing, and I hope you use soap when you're bathing and everything, Imagine and pray for the Lord to forgive you and to wipe you clean of resentment, of anger, of bitterness. And then when you get into your car, practice red light prayers. When you stop at a red light, instead of getting angry or waving to the person next to you in a bad way, pray. And say, Lord, I thank you. Help me to live the rest of this day in your power and in your strength. And then at night, 
before you go to sleep. Pray for all the things God provided for you. For all the ways that you got it wrong and asked for his forgiveness and then pray for his strength the next day. I promise you if you do that, you'll find that power. A friend one time once told me about a big church that had a big organ like this that once lost power right before the worship service. And fortunately, in the congregation was a member of the church who was an organ repairman. And so he was able to to fix it. Uh, You know, the service started, but he went in, and uh, it was a pretty simple problem. It was an electrical problem. But by the time he fixed it, it was the middle of the service and the middle of the sermon. And so he wrote something on a note, walked over to the organist, and she opened it, and it said this. After prayer, there will be power. When I saw that and heard that, I said, I got to use that one. Folks, the same God who parted the Red Sea wants to hear from you. The same God who created the universe wants to hear from you. The same God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead wants to hear from you. After prayer, there will be power. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we need your power and strength. We can't do it alone. And we are grateful that we have access to you, the greatest power generator ever. We have access to you through prayer. Oh Lord, help us to pray continually, to pray without ceasing, to continue to plug into you, to expect that power to use that power, to rely on that power. So Lord, I pray for for many of us here who feel drained, wiped out because of life, because of the events of this world. And I pray you give them a full, real charge to live their week in your power and strength. Lord, we pray for that. We plug into that. It's in Christ's name we pray.